It's time for another edition of Cowboys Special Edition, brought to you by AT&T. Bill Jones, along with Bucky Brooks, Isaiah Stanback, and Nate Newton, as we are into the second round of the NFL playoffs, the divisional playoff round. Of course, the Cowboys into their second week of the offseason, and a lot of happening this past week here at the Star in Frisco. We'll get into those moves coming up as we go along. But as uh, we go into the postseason and into the offseason uh, for the uh, Cowboys, Bucky, let's go around the horn start with you. Uh, the uh, focus is on getting this team better in 2021. Yeah, it is on getting the team better. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to review all the film. You got to reflect on the things that you want to work on. And you have to make the changes that are necessary to get back on track. And so the first couple of weeks of the offseason are all about Mike McCarthy looking at his team and trying to figure out what are the things that we need to do to get better and how can we get better in a hurry. Absolutely. And this is a time for self-reflection, self-analysis, um, and to be transparent with yourself and within the organization. Um, and it's an opportunity for those guys all to get together, Coach McCarthy um, and, and the rest of the team, and to figure out exactly what it is they need to do from the head down to make sure that this, they, they don't repeat this year, um, next year. You know, I don't have much to add to that, but I, I just want to say I think Coach McCarthy did a great job in managing this season and the fire storm that it was, and now he can break this season down. Uh, with his players, with his coaches, and uh, and get things going in the right direction. And it didn't take him long uh, to make a move on the defensive side of the football as Mike Nolan was let go at the end of last week. Jim Tom Sula, the defensive line coach as well. And, uh, Bucky, it didn't take long for him to make a decision to hire Dan Quinn, the former head coach of the Atlanta Falcons and the former defensive coordinator with the Seahawks, uh, to uh, head up this Dallas defense. You know, Bill, I think this move is less about scheme and more about the culture and the environment. Uh, the one thing that permeated Dan Quinn's teams in Atlanta, it was a phrase called the brotherhood. And the brotherhood is all about guys playing for one another, holding one another accountable to the standard. And before we can talk about the X's and O's, I think he has to change the way that they think about one another in the defensive room. That is why Dan Quinn is on board to change the habits and the mindset of this defense. You're absolutely correct, um, and Buck. I mean, I was at, I was there in Seattle when <clears throat> when Coach Quinn was out there, and it's all about culture. Uh, obviously, everybody knows when you talk about the Permian uh, culture, I um, mean, energy that that he exudes, and that is absolutely correct. He takes that everywhere he goes. It's contagious. He's high energy. Um, he's deliberate, um, and he's transparent. And he's going to bring uh, bring a great culture to this cultureless team. And more importantly, he starts up front because he's a defensive line guru and that's how he made his name coming into this league before he became a coordinator. I like that so we can stop the, we can stop the run. And with the run being stopped, then things can happen. And he was a defensive line coach with the Seahawks before he became the defensive coordinator of Florida and then came back to the Seahawks as the D.C. So what can we expect as far as personnel on this defense with Dan Quinn as the coordinator, Bucky? I think you have a chance to see the stars play like stars. And when I think about the stars, I'm going to talk about three names, Demarcus Lawrence, Jalen Smith, and Leighton Vander Esch. And the reason why I think they have a chance to reemerge as stars is because the scheme fits how they play. Demarcus Lawrence being an up the field edge rusher, and then the two linebackers being sideline to sideline chasers, I think they'll have a chance to play at a high level. Yeah, I think more than anything, you know, one thing that Coach Quinn does a good job is, is acknowledging the personnel that he has and then getting the most out of those individuals, not only through personal relationships, but also simply just highlighting their athleticism and putting them in, in the positions to be successful. I think we'll see a better Antoine Woods, a better Tristan Hill, and a better Neville Gallimore this year because, like I said before, with this uh, defensive line experts tease, I love it. And, uh, Bucky, one last question to you on uh, Dan Quinn and the personnel. How do you expect him to use, like, a Randy Gregory in this defense? Oh, I think he'll be what is called the Leo in that defense, meaning the open side in. And when I look at Randy Gregory and the way that he came on, if you can put him on the side away from the tight end and allow him to use his speed, quickness, and overall athleticism, I think he can be a difference maker. We got a tease of that in 2020. I think we'll see more of that in 2021. All right, we continue with more Cowboys Special Edition in just a moment. We turn our attention to the offensive side of the football in Zeke Elliott in 2020. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Salvation Army. 
doing the most good. And by AT&T. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the new sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So play today. Just the heart of the men in that locker room, you could just, I mean, you see where we were at. We were three and nine, and uh, we gave ourselves a shot to, um, to, to make the playoffs. And uh, I mean, like you said, everything we faced this year, uh, it seemed like not really anything went in our way, um, but you know somehow, you know we kept we kept grinding, we kept uh, we kept going, and, and we kept fighting. And, and I'm proud of this, this group of men uh, for that. All that matters is my teammates and uh, and, and my coaches and, and ownership. And uh, I mean they've been supportive of me all year. Uh, it's been a rough one, um, but uh, I mean just had to grind it out, and uh, we. We, we landed up, ended up short, but uh, we'll be back stronger next year for sure. Zeke Elliott brought to you by Auto Nation as we're welcoming you back here to Cowboys Special Edition. Brought to you by AT&T, Bill Jones, Isaiah Stanback, Nate Newton, and Bucky Brooks. Let's turn our attention to this Cowboys offense now. And Ezekiel Elliott, he did not have the production. We've grown accustomed to seeing Zeke have uh, early in his uh, career. Of course, a lot of reasons for that. But let's start with you, Isaiah. What did you see out of Ezekiel Elliott this year? Yeah, I think Zeke obviously was playing through a lot of adversity. Um, obviously, he had the, adverse, had the adversity of quarterback being gone, um, the added pressure of him needing to make more plays in which we saw him do things outside of himself, which was uh, in turn uh, resulted in fumbles. Um, and then we saw him dealing with some injuries and trying to overcome those things. Um, he dealt with a lot this year, but one thing I think he's going to take away from it is uh, to really go into this offseason really working on his ability um, to be an independent runner in terms of not needing as much blocking, being more shifty, being more agile, and being a lot more um, powerful and, and, and having that acceleration to his game. I think he's going to focus a lot more on that so that he can handle all, all adversities that come next year. You know, I think Zeke has been so talented coming through high school and into college. And he took a lot of things for granted. And that's when that fumbling bug hit him. And then he had to take a step back and, and realize who he was and what he meant to this team. And now that he's done that, and he's proven that uh, going into the later half of the season, I think he'll have a great offseason doing the things you said, Isaiah. You know, Nate and Isaiah, I think you guys hit on, on great points about Zeke, but I think it's also Mike McCarthy understanding what he has now. I think he has a better feel for the personnel. And I think getting Zeke the ball would be a priority. I think the running game really sets the table for a lot of what the Cowboys will do going forward. I think Zeke will bounce back. he bounce back in a great way in 2021. And, and how about the Cowboys wide receivers? Of course, uh, one of the uh, strongest units on the team with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and C.D. Lamb with now a year under his belt. What we learned about the wide receivers and what they went through this season, uh, Isaiah, uh, playing with four different quarterbacks as the season went along. Um, those guys are steadfast. I mean, you, not only did you mention those guys, you know, we obviously have Wilson um, and Brown that came off the bench as well, and they played really well. So those five guys really kind of showed up, and they showed up in a, in a consistent way. Obviously, there's a little bit of fall off between quarterbacks, but that just comes down to timing. Um, I think you know exactly who you have, and you have some tough, consistent players out there on the edges. You know, I, I just want to say this here, man, because I had doubts going into the season. Mari Cooper really surprised me this year. He was very, very consistent through all the changes of the quarterback. You know, Michael Gallup kind of fell off a little bit, got a little inconsistent, same way with CD. But I tell you that Amari Cooper brought everybody along well, as well as those backups. You know, we can talk about those perimeter players and the wide receivers are outstanding, but I think the emergence of Dalton Schultz, I think he can be a weapon going forward. When you get Blake Jarwin back to go with Jarwin Sh Sh Dalton Schultz, I think you have an opportunity to do more 12 personnel things, two tight end packages. I think the Cowboys could be a little more diverse in how they attack teams going forward. And, of course, uh, Kellen Moore is uh, back, uh, a multi-year contract he agreed to uh, right at the end of the regular season. Actually, the Philadelphia Eagles expressing some interest in Kellen Moore uh, for their head coaching position now. That's rather interesting. And it should be interesting coming up next here on Cowboys Special Edition because we are going to hear from Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. 
Play the new Sevens scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery. With top prizes up to $977,000, there's a Sevens scratch ticket for everyone. So play today. This segment is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back to Cowboys Special Edition and brought to you by Nationwide. It's time to hear from Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. Danny Sorek has more. The 6-10 and 10 Cowboys finished third in the NFC East in what was a disappointing season on many fronts. The defense allowed 473 points, a franchise record. Injuries plagued this team from the get-go. Dallas lost their first of many starters in the first week of training camp. Those injuries played a large part in this year's struggles. Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones chooses to see the silver lining through it all. He says it was a great opportunity for those young players who stepped up to get reps they otherwise wouldn't have gotten. Jones says he likes the improvements he saw every week from those players. I don't like the circumstances that they got them under, the reason they got them. Uh, but they became better players than they would have been. We need to take those reps, additional reps that we've got. We need to take the success that we had when we brought on our, our draft picks and our free agents, our college free agents. Uh, we need to take that and um, uh, build from that. Uh, those guys really felt this one because they were a part of it. They ran the games. Our coaching staff have a vivid uh, look see at how to uh, do things uh, differently and your general manager your owner sure has a very vivid and motivated uh, uh, situation to look at to uh, motivate that to uh, have us do better some of those younger players who saw significant playing time this year from injuries include left tackle Brandon Knight, right tackle Terrence Steele, center Tyler Biotish, and right guard Connor McGovern. Pretty much your entire offensive line was composed of young, inexperienced players due to injuries. Tight end Dalton Schultz also saw significant playing time, as did defensive tackle Neville Gallimore, cornerback Trayvon Diggs, and safety Donovan Wilson. All these young players took advantage of an opportunity following an unfortunate injury to a starter at their position. While it's not ideal to have so many starters out, the Cowboys now have some great insight about what kind of depth this team truly has. That'll come in handy as the Cowboys prepare to make the 10th overall pick in this year's draft. Bill? All right, thanks, Danny. Jerry Jones spinning it positive for 2021. Cowboys already making moves this offseason on the defensive side of the football. As far as coaches are concerned, when we come back, what about defensive players? The guys will regroup, and we'll see if the Cowboys' defense can regroup when Special Edition continues in a moment. This segment was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Cowboy Special Edition brought to you by AT&T continues now. Let's take a look at some positions of need for the Cowboys on the defensive side of the football. Of course, we talked about Dan Quinn, the new defensive coordinator. Joe Witt Jr. has hired as the uh, pass game coordinator, the secondary coach on uh, defense. Isaiah, let's start with you. How about a position of need at safety for this uh, team? How big is that? It's huge. It's huge. Obviously, you know, the safety is the quarterback of, of, the, of the secondary. So I think that's, a, that's the area that we need to address. We need to address it with some veterans, not some young guys. Um, and being that Coach Quinn has a little history uh, with Atlanta, I think that he goes and turns to a veteran, Keanu Neal, who's going to be uh, who's due for a free agency right now. I mean, I think he also goes back to his ties with Seattle and tries to pull back Earl Thomas. So I think he brings in two veterans to solidify that safety position and then go out there and get yourself a young corner. And, of course, Donovan Wilson on this current roster showed some promise uh, this season. All right, uh, Bucky, how can the Cowboys turn this into a legion of boom secondary? Well, no, I think Isaiah hit it. I think the most important piece in the secondary is the safety, and it's not necessarily the drop-down safety who needs to be in the box, but the guy who has to be the ornament on the Christmas tree. 
The Cowboys have neglected the free safety position for years. They need a guy who has range from numbers to numbers, who can make plays, and I think is essential to this team being effective. They've been able to do it in Seattle. They were able to develop corners, but I think the safety has to be a priority. It has to be somewhere where they invest some money and some draft capital. All right, how about another position of need on defense, Nate? How about up in that uh, defensive line, in, in particular, the defensive tackle position? You know, we have Gallimore, we have uh, Tristan uh, Hill that's coming off the of injury. We have uh, Antoine Woods. And all of these guys, you know, I think right now it's just rotation guys because the two got young guys uh, have not had enough experience. But can Coach Quinn get the best out of them quick enough or do he need to go get a veteran guy there that can eat up some blocks or, and, and rush the passer? Okay, what do, what do you think, uh, Dan Quinn, who has a defensive line uh, coach in, in his past? The defensive tackle position is going to be something he's going to be really looking at in the draft, isn't he, Bucky? Yeah, look, I, I think the D-line position has to be something that you look at. And uh, there's some handful of guys in the draft that could certainly come in and help. But I think the big thing with Dan Quinn would be the development. And because the D.C. has experience with the D-line, that's going to be his baby. So I think he's going to get with Woods and Gallimore and Tristan Hill and see if he can develop those guys into the players that he wants them to be at the front line. You know, Bucky, it also would be nice if he could find, let's say in the fifth round, maybe a Grady Jarrett like he did in Atlanta. What do you think of that? <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you can find an interior pass rush to someone that can be disruptive on the inside, it's critical because we can talk about the defensive tackles. Those guys are essential to the front, but really, you want those guys to be able to be active so Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch can run around and make plays. We saw it happen in 2018. Let's see if you can get those guys back to playing well by having better bodies up front. All right, we wrap up special edition, the keys to the offseason when we come back. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Special edition presented by AT&T was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Final couple of minutes of our final edition of Cowboys Special Edition brought to you by AT&T. And let's look ahead to the offseason. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with you, Bucky. The key to a successful Cowboys offseason, what would you say it is? Mike McCarthy doing some soul searching and coming up with a clear plan to get this team on track. I think he has shaken off the rust after that layoff. He had a year with the Cowboys. He fully understands the team that he's in charge of. I think now it's about him improving, so his coaches will improve and the, team, and the players will improve because of better coaching. All right, Isaiah Standback, what do you think? What's the key to the Cowboys being successful this offseason? I got three things for you, Bill. Uh, they need to create an identity. They need to recognize what their identity is, create that, um, uh, create a culture, um, and then create a system of accountability. I think if they can, can, I can figure out who they are, establish a culture, and they all take some accountability, I think we see a totally different team next year. All right, and Nate, what, what are you thinking? What's, what's the key to a successful offseason? I think, it, I think it's one word, dedication. Dedication to the scheme, dedication to the, to the guy next to you, dedication to being a Dallas Cowboy and doing it the right way. Kind of like the same kind of dedication we have had throughout this season here on Cowboys Special Edition. <laughs> it's been a brotherhood, hasn't it? All right. I got yes. one more question for you as we wrap it up. All right. Who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? All right. We got a couple of weeks, some games to be played, of course, before. But who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? What do you think, Bucky? I'm going off the grid. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens shocking the world and hoisting the title. All right. What do you think, Ooh. Isaiah? I'm going with Mahomes and crew. <laughs> All right. And I, Nate, went with the, I went with the Saints. I went from the Saints from the beginning. I'm going with the Saints in the end. They gave the Bears the participation river, and they gone. Let's go, Saints. <laughs> they got to beat Tampa, Tampa Bay tomorrow night first, and they're going to win it by one point. All right. Thanks for joining us. That's right. Special edition all season long.